I've always had a soft spot for the Gibson Flying V. One was prominently featured in the School of Rock movie and that's what made me want to play guitar as a kid. So ever since then, I've always thought they looked cool. And recently, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to play a 1982 Flying V that used to be owned by Johnny Marr. And it was really nice. <laughs> That guitar played great, I really enjoyed it, and it made me think just for a second, maybe I've been a bit too harsh on Gibson. I clicked onto their website and was quickly reminded that the guitar I liked so much was from Gibson 41 years ago, not from the Gibson today. The Gibson of today seem to be focusing their efforts more on becoming a fashion brand than a guitar brand, and this used to be a theory, but it's not really a theory anymore. Before we get into the hilarity of it. Oh my god, uh, it, they're charging 500 euro for you to look like Mr. Rogers. I should probably give you some backstory. Before the current CEO of Gibson took over the company in 2018, Henry Juskovich was the CEO of Gibson, and had been for quite some time. He started in 1986, but by the end of Henry's tenure in the position, he had picked up a bit of a reputation for having ideas that didn't really work out. One of which was robot tuners, and people really didn't like those. Another was the Firebird X, and well, that resulted in this clip that you've probably seen before. And while these weren't the sole or direct causes, they certainly helped in getting Gibson into over half a billion dollars in debt. I've said it before, Gibson's biggest competitor isn't Fender or PRS or ESP or Dean. Gibson's biggest competitor are Gibson. A Les Paul Standard from 2008 isn't a whole lot different from a Les Paul Standard you could buy today. Arguably the biggest and most notable difference, at least to most people, is the price. Gibson will always be competing against its past guitars because there are so many of them and they haven't really changed a whole lot over the years. But Henry had an idea. Way back in 2011, he said that he wanted to make Gibson a powerhouse lifestyle brand on par with Nike. The fact is, we don't see ourselves as a guitar company, we see ourselves as a music lifestyle company. His reasoning being that if you ask someone to name a guitar brand who doesn't play guitar, they're more likely to answer either Fender or Gibson. And that can be a lot of people or potential customers who have the brand recognition but will never buy a product from you because they don't play guitar and your products are guitars. So comparatively there's a pretty big difference between those who know of the product and those who use the product. So if you can expand that customer base you've got a much better chance at making back that half a billion. And this has been done before. It's the reason that I'm holding a football from Ferrari. This is a car brand. It's the same reason that Fender have released a new line of luxury fedoras, because the first one wasn't bad enough. It's also the same reason that Marshall have a line of headphones, fridges, sunglasses, and have released more new flavours of beer than they have of new amps in the last few years. Part of Henry's plan included a West Hollywood showroom. West Hollywood being the Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive sort of area that the rich and more influencer packed area of Hollywood. It's the sort of place where designer brands matter and the t-shirt that you could sell for 20 goes for 200. But before Henry could make his plans a reality he was removed from the position of CEO. But not entirely removed from Gibson, he was kept on as an advisor. Henry's focus on the business outside of guitar manufacturing wasn't exactly looked upon fondly by the existing Gibson audience, which were guitar players. But with the supposedly new vision of the company from newly appointed CEO JC Curley, things were looking up. Players were excited, but not for long. The manufacturers out there, we want you to know that you've been warned. We're looking out. Just a few months into the new Gibson, the famed Play Authentic video was released. 
and then just a few days after that, it was announced that Gibson were suing Dean Guitars. And in the court documents, Gibson were pretty clear as to why, or at least one of the reasons why, they were suing Dean. Dean's use of different shapes and names made it difficult for Gibson to license these designs to other brands in clothing and other non-music related accessories. Armadillo has known that the Gibson trademarks are highly desirable property to Gibson, other guitar manufacturers and companies engaging in the sale of clothing, guitar accessories, memorabilia and other collectible goods. Additionally, Armadillo has known of Gibson's desire and intent to license the valuable Gibson trademarks to existing and potential clients for use with guitars and other goods. Having seen that Armadillo misappropriated the Gibson trademarks for their own gain without Gibson's permission and without any compensation to Gibson, other companies now do not feel it necessary to enter into or continue with licensing agreements with Gibson for the use of the Gibson trademarks. Armadillo's conduct has caused Gibson substantial harm and damages because Gibson is unable to fully commercialise on the licensing of the Gibson trademarks to various companies engaged in the sale of clothing, guitar accessories, memorabilia and other collectible goods. Henry's plan seemed to be still in motion, just with the few little changes. The West Hollywood showroom ended up being a Nashville showroom. But the target of people with way too much money certainly didn't change. Gibson have reached out to fashion designers to collaborate, in other words, license designs to, charge a pretty penny for some not so pretty clothing. So uh, let's take a look. All right, I'm not gonna jump into the deep end yet. Let's start off small. Let's go with this uh, shirt from Gibson and H bar C. It's like a classic country-esque shirt, but it's uh, it's 200 euro, quite expensive. But at least you get the, the designs, you get the Gibson logo on the back. It is, um, it's not cheap, but it's nowhere near what we will be getting to. That's 200. Then the next brand that Gibson were working with was Imogen and Willie, which, uh, you know, they make some pretty expensive t-shirts, you know, 70 euro for a white t-shirt with a, a skull on it. So yeah, that's your designer tax that you get put on this sort of stuff, but still, we're not there yet. So let's get there. Remember the, the shirt, that was our base point, that was 200. What can you get for 200 from the Billy Reed Gibson collaboration is a scarf, a rocker scarf. Ooh. You can get a bandana. What about a bandana? That's the same price as the t-shirts that we were looking at. 68 euro. Now this here is a standard woolly hat. There isn't any Gibson branding there. It's It's got a few hummingbirds on it. How much? How much do you think it costs? Shout out a number right now. 128 euro. 128 euro. And the thing is, you'll see this, you know, with designers, they'll often make the stuff in the location that they're from and then you say, well, that's why it costs so much. Uh, in this case, you know, it's the award-winning Florence, Alabama-based fashion designer. Where, where's the hat made that you're paying 128 euro for? A beanie? Made in China. <laughs> oh. There's a dress that would just look fantastic um, at a funeral. Uh, five five hundred quid. Oh my god. Uh, it, they're charging five hundred euro for you to look like Mister Rogers. I'm pretty sure I've seen that in a charity shop. That is, that is something. But four hundred and ninety eight euro for oh, made in China. This one's a personal favorite. This is a completely black sweatshirt, and if you look really closely, you can see that the stitching on it, which has got a couple of birds. Um, is also in black, so you can't see it. Price? Uh, 300. <laughs> oh, oh, this one's made in Canada. Here's another Gibson jumper. Um, this one is completely plain on the front. Design on the back is the hummingbird design. Um, so kind of related to Gibson in a sense, but not really. Um, 398 euro, that's 400 quid. Uh, oh, Made in China again. So let's finish off with this one. This one's the creme de la creme. This is the biker jacket. 100% lambskin. That sounds creepy. Um, it looks perfectly fine. It doesn't look like how much it costs, which is 1,498 euro. It's one and a half grand for a jacket. 
Why? It makes sense why Gibson are collaborating with designer brands. It gives them credibility in an industry in which they have none. Gibson Guitars. It has lost its credibility, so it's borrowing some of mine. Well, personally, I don't think they're going far enough. At least not far enough to make this work well. The promotion for these ventures has been near non-existent with a few articles and a YouTube video that got 6,000 views. And that's promotion to the existing Gibson audience. The people who would much rather spend less money than the leather jacket on the actual product that Gibson's known for. In my opinion, for this to become a successful and profitable lifestyle brand, Gibson probably need to invest about a million or more into influencer marketing. And I'm not talking about guitar influencers. Giving Retchel a Gibson t-shirt is probably not going to help much. For the prices that they're charging and expecting to get, they're going to need Kardashians and TikTok influencers to really push these clothes and this brand in the hopes that teenagers with low self-esteem will think that they need them. It's been done before, it's worked for Supreme, so it could work for Gibson. But if you're banking on your current customer base to spend 128 quid on a beanie, I think you might be in trouble. And there's risk either way. The biggest risk that I see is that you could still be alienating your actual customer base because it does come across a bit detached to be selling a jacket for more than what you sell the product that you're known for for. But that's the video. Like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.